Nemo tessa begoetto, Araheto, Summa, some Buddha sa, Nemo tessa begoetto, Araheto, Summa, some Buddha sa, Nemo tessa begoetto, Araheto, Summa, some Buddha sa. Now I'm going to uh, speak about formless meditation, meditation on the formless abidings or states. And to begin with, I'll cite the source for this. I've developed this meditation, adapted it from the um, Chula Sunyata Sutta in the Majjhima Nikaya as a way of experimenting with the formless abidings, you know, the, the, those states of mind that are beyond sensuality, beyond form. Um, in the Buddhist cosmology, there are three levels of existence. There's the sense-desire realm, there's the realm of form, that is the uh, Brahma world, and then there's the formless. These are beings that are mind only and no physical form. So Chula Sunyata Sutta, the uh, English translation of that title would be the Lesser Discourse on Voidness. So this becomes a way of gradually purifying the mind, simplifying the, the mind to approach uh, this uh, pristine state of emptiness that, that is in the formless abidings. Besides giving the meditator a taste of emptiness, it uh, also illustrates very well the, the important Dhamma principle that progress in the Dhamma is a, a matter of simplifying and purifying the mind. It's not attaining something new or creating something different uncovering the mind in layers to get to a more primordial, natural state of mind. So this is an important thing to bear in mind in this meditation, that we're not conjuring anything up. What we're doing is we'll progress through, we progress through uh, three stages of form and then four stages of formless in our perception. And we're not in at any stage, we're not imagining something new, but ignoring or peeling away one layer of experience and seeing what remains underneath. It's already there. Our ordinary daily experience in the sense-desire realm is very complex. And there are many stimulus and many uh, things to notice and, and many occurrences going on continually. But underneath that, there are layers and layers in the mind that are hidden by that noise. So we're trying to uncover what's in the, the uh, deeper, more fundamental layers of the mind. So in each transition, we're not adding anything new. We're peeling away one layer of experience and seeing, okay, what's underneath? You know? So it begins with a kind of uh, general awareness, a kind of gestalt awareness. You're just trying to be aware of your body and your surroundings and the natural world and just being present with what is. This is the starting point without um, investigating or judging or going anywhere. Just, you know, what what is the experience right now? What is this? What do I see? What do I hear? What do I feel? Just being present with that, you know? And starting from that point, you also extend beyond your what you immediately see and hear into taking the, the, the broader surroundings, you know, this kind of the area where you're you're living and sitting, you know, what just the, the natural ordinary world, all the the buildings and the, the people and the, the, the ground, the grass, you know, whatever is present. And this is called, in the, in the sutta, this is called contemplation of village. Village is used here as a, a sign for the ordinary, the mundane, the day-to-day. -day. This is the village. This is the village where you live. 
Then in the next transition, it's called contemplation of forest. And forest is a sign for the natural world. So you take that first initial contemplation of your surroundings and you remove from your perception and from your mind's eye, you remove any man-made structures. You remove buildings and roads and telephone poles, whatever there is, and just pay attention to the underlying natural environment that's already there that in some cases is hidden by the concrete and the, the brick and so on, but it's there. There's a natural world of grass and trees and rivers and creeks and sky and, you know, just be aware of the natural world. Not paying attention to anything artificial or man-made. That's contemplation of forest. And you'll find it right away that's more peaceful. But it's still fairly complex. So in the next transition, we remove from our mind's eye and from our perception any organic things, any living things, plants and trees and animals and so forth, and just pay attention to the underlying earth, the earth element, the ground and the rocks and the hills and the valleys. You know, this is, again, this is something that's always there. It's hidden by the vegetation and by the man-made structures, but it's always there. There's the earth and the ground, the rocks, and so forth. And extend your perception in your mind's eye to take in this whole earth, to see this planet as a ball of solid earth element, a globe, a sphere taking up space. One of the definitions of earth element in the Abhidhamma is uh, the taking up of space. So where earth is, it's, it takes up that much space. So we have this round globe of solid, heavy, dense earth element. And that that's as far as we go with um, in the form world. Now we make a transition. So you start with this globe of solid earth and remove the earth. Just don't pay attention to the earth element and pay attention to the space that it had taken up. So there's this globe of space, this empty space. And by the very nature of space, it doesn't hold boundaries. You know, it has no limits. So transition easily into boundless space, which is the first formless contemplation, the contemplation of boundless space infinite in all directions, uh, void and empty of objects, the boundlessness of space, not paying attention to any objects within the space, but just the space itself. So now all that exists is your consciousness filling the infinitude of space. So the next transition again is a, a simple one, cease to pay attention to space. Space still has some kind of tenuous reference to materiality. It's a kind of coordinate system. So cease to pay attention to that and pay attention to boundless consciousness, the boundlessness of consciousness without reference to space. And this is the second formless abiding, boundless consciousness. And you see, in each case, in each step, we're just ceasing to pay attention to something and seeing what's underneath. So the next transition, don't pay attention to consciousness and be aware of nothing. This is the contemplation of the sphere of nothingness. In Pali, that's akinchayatana, which is really more literally would be no thingness. There's no thing to reference. So that's the third formless abiding. And then we go one more step to a very subtle state. It's actually the most subtle state that's still within samsara. It's uh, samsara reduced to its absolute minimum. Even nothingness is a concept that's too complex. You know, you still have a concept of nothingness. You remove that. 
and just abide in what's called neither perception nor non-perception. And don't get hung up by the name. Don't try and figure it out. Just That's just a name put onto what's unnameable. So you're just removing the concept of nothingness and you abide in neither perception nor non-perception. So you can go through this, uh, these seven steps as slowly as you like, making always the, uh, the, uh, the project to remove your attention from some aspect of reality and seeing what's already there, you know, what's naturally already there, but is hidden by the more complex levels and accessing a more fundamental and primordial level of mind. So that's the a brief guide to meditation on the formless abidings. <laughs>